بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Warzazi welcoming you back into another episode of the Ramadanic series entitled Rock Your Ramadan Day 11 uh, Something interesting happened a couple days ago a guy called me on the phone and he said that I uh, Sheikh I happened to uh, have an intercourse with my wife with my spouse and um, while I was fasting so what do I have to do? Um, intercourse with your spouse while you're fasting. Said, Man, why did you have to do that? Can't you wait until after the iftar? He said, um, no, Sheikh, I just had to. <laughs> you what? You <laughs> you had to? I <laughs> said, okay, easy. Uh, what you have to do is, uh, that number one, it's a major sin. So what you have to do is, you, number one, you have to free slave. Um, you can't do that okay what well, if you cannot do that then you have to fast uh, 60 days and I don't think I can do that okay well then you have to feed 60 poor people and the evidence is in the hadith you know where do we get the uh, this uh, sort of uh, sequence of expiation from this hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Abu Hurairah about a man who came to the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, told him Ya Rasulullah halakt O Prophet of Allah ihtaraqt in one other narration O Rasulullah I have put myself to destruction um, I burnt myself what did you do? the Prophet said or asked and then the man said I had an intercourse with my wife while I was fasting then he says okay the Prophet says okay then free slave to expiate for your sin you have to free slave that's number one the man said ya rasulullah i can't do that and then the prophet says okay then uh, can you fast 60 days and then the man he wasn't a sort of like an you know a middle-aged man he says well ya rasulullah i can't do that either i cannot fast 60 days and then the prophet said okay then feed 60 people and then the man said well ya rasulullah i'm I don't have the means to feed 60 people and as the Prophet was uh, you know he paused as he was talking to that man and then somebody came to the house of the Prophet and brought him some dates so the Prophet gave the man a date the dates and he told him go and feed 60 people 60 poor people and then the man he says Ya Rasulullah Wallahi people they know in Medina I'm the, I'm, there's nobody who's poorer than me in Medina everybody knows me Ya Rasulullah I am the poorest of all the people of Medina and then the Prophet started laughing until he's you know the teen his teeth got shown meaning he was really laughing and he says okay take the dates and go feed your family so this hadith explains the expiation for those who or for someone who uh, happens to have an intercourse with his spouse with her spouse uh, while fasting number one they have to do something called al-qada or as our Pakistani Indian brothers and sisters say qaza <laughs> it's not qaza it's qada uh, which is you have to make up for that day number two you have al-kaffar al-mughallada al-kaffar al-mughallada which is the major expiation freeing a slave if not then uh, fasting 60 days and if you were to fast 60 days by the way and if you were to break your fast, let's say in the middle, just because you chose to, you fast in 60 days and then in the middle somewhere you just uh, uh, broke your fast, uh, you know, you broke your fast and then uh, uh, because you just, um, you know, you wanted to, you have to repeat all over, as Ahl al they have said. And this, like you got sick or you traveled or uh, the day of fasting happened to be a day of, let's say, Eid or so, then it's okay for you to break your fast. And number three if you cannot fast then you have to feed 60 poor people how can you feed them you feed them with whatever it, you know it, it costs you to break your fast let's say you know how much does it cost you to to have a, a you know a, a lunch and dinner like a meal for the day if it costs you let's say twenty dollars that's what you're gonna feed them you know or ten dollars that's what you're going to feed them you feed them from what you feed yourself right 10 bucks 15 20 bucks whatever it costs you to feed yourself 
that's you know per day for 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 one person you can maybe collect that money and and feed 60 poor people or you can or you can uh, you know or you can collect them yani, and and feed and feed them or you can go every day to one person and feed them uh it's all permissible inshallah ta'ala that's number one number two this is another this is from the mubtilat al-siyam this is from the things that break your fast the things that break your fast is al jima you know uh, having intercourse with your spouse in the in the day of ramadan when you're fasting by the way the kafara the kafara that is it is it uh, do i have to follow the sequence yes to have to follow the sequence as uh, mentioned or explained in the hadith of the prophet muhammad والسلام, he mentioned you know freeing a slave number one as and then and then and then fasting uh, 60 days and feeding 60 people poor people uh and the kafara stays until you know if you cannot do it it stays in your neck as a debt until the day you pay it back uh which is you know to fulfill the expiation another thing that that breaks your fast in ramadan is that you eat or drink uh, intentionally that breaks your fast what happens you know what's the expiation the expiation you have to make up for that day do I have to do the kafar al do I have to free slave and feed 60 people or feed 60 people or fast uh, 60 days no you don't have to but it's definitely a sin it's a big sin especially if you have no reason you, know, you just broke your fast like that then you have to make up, you know, for the fast, right? This is also reported by Bukhari and Muslim. But how about if I were to drink accidentally or eat accidentally and I forgot? So it's not intentionally. طيب, that's fine. Very nice. There's a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim about that. About a man who uh, happened to eat or drink uh, accidentally while he was fasting, the Prophet says, that man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fed him. Yani Allah has fed him, yeah. which means that person has, doesn't have to do anything. That person does not have to make up or do anything. All he has to do or she has to do, as soon as she, he or she remembers you know, that they're eating, they have to stop, stop what they're doing and then complete the siyam. Let's say you're eating a cluster of grapes. You know, you have grapes, a cluster of grapes, and then you just started eating. You know, if you forgot. You're fasting, but subhanAllah, you forgot. And then you, you know, you're eating, and then you're eating, you know, the, from the cluster of grapes. And then all of a sudden, you remember that you're fasting, and you only have one grape left. And then all of a sudden, you said, you know, subhanAllah, I remember, I'm fasting today. I, only one grape left. Okay, well, I'll finish it. That particular grape, that last grape, that one grape would break your fast. All the cluster of grapes, all those grapes that you have eaten, did not break your fast. But the last remaining grape that you ate while you remembered, that would break your fast. You see how subhanAllah, you know, things are in, in Islam. So if you were to eat or drink intentionally, that would break your fast. Another thing that breaks someone's fast is inzan al-mani yani bi shahwa. The releasing of the uh, of that fluid of the uh, that comes from you uh, with your choice. Let's say you are with your spouse you're sort of you know mingling with your spouse not having intercourse and all of a sudden you you uh, uh, you release that, that 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 fluid so what happens is that breaks your fast because this though that was your choice you did it yourself that was your choice so you did it yourself that do you have to do the kafara mughallada like freeing a slave and and fasting 60 days or uh, fee or feeding 60 poor people no you don't have to because you did not go to the intercourse you were just made you know uh, Kathleen and whatnot and then you released uh, that fluid so that breaks your fast is it permissible for someone to kiss his spouse while fasting yes yes it is as the Prophet used to do with Aisha and others but some of Ahl al said it depends you know a young man you know sometimes you know they say they may say, they say well if you're a young man and you have all these mashallah tabarakallah you know you just got married yesterday la they say you know it's better not to kiss your spouse this is you know some you know maybe an old man you know like a cha cha yeah jews but some cha chas you have to be careful <laughs> you have to be careful with some cha chas you know so uh, it's yeah jews it's permissible but you know case by case basis here <laughs> um, 
How about if you were, you know, sleeping and then you woke up in the middle of Ramadan, in the middle of the day, you woke up uh, releasing, you know, having like a wet dream. Does that break your fast? No, it does not break your fast. Uh, as Aisha reported, you know, that the Prophet Muhammad uh, you know, fasting even the day of Ramadan, and let's say he would wake up after Fajr, like after the end of Fajr, and with a wet dream. So what would he do, Ali Sallam? He would go take a bath, and, and proceed with his fasting alayhi salatu wasalam. You don't have to make up anything. You know, you just go take a, you know, take a bath and complete your fasting. Another thing that breaks uh, someone's fast is uh, that you, uh, you know, throw up intentionally. Yani you take your, your finger like this and then, you know, you, you vomit intentionally. That breaks uh, your fast. According to uh, in hadith reported by Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, Al-Hakim, Ibn Taymiyyah, you know, man that the Prophet Muhammad says, whosoever you know vomits uh, عمداً, يعني, intentionally, فليقضي. he has to make up for that day. But if you were to let's say you got sick or something, then you just throw up, uh, but not intentionally, just you know, it just you couldn't help it, and then you just started throwing up, that does not break your fast. That does not break your fast. What breaks your fast is if you do it again intentionally. Subhanallah. And the last thing that breaks uh, someone's fast, of course, is the Hayd wa Nifas, you know, the menstruating women and also postnatal bleeding. These are the things where, you know, women, they don't, re they don't have to fast. So I just thought to share this with you uh, as, you know, um, we're, you know, fasting here and sometimes we're asked these questions as to what happened in this case and that case. Hope, inshallah ta'ala, that you will benefit from these type of uh, types of reminders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Remember, rock your Ramadan, and I shall meet you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, day 12, for some more tips on how to have an outstanding Ramadan. Until then, I say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.